This is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Today I'm going to be kitting up my next project which is Foxy Lady by Camilla Derrico and this is from Diamond Art Club as you can see from the branding. It's, it's not my usual style this one. I did an unboxing of this back when I bought it and it's yeah it's one of those ones that if you ask me to list the kinds of things that I like this style of painting would not be in it um, and yet this one called to me and sometimes that happens and, and when that does happen I like to go for it because I like variety so this is what I'm going to be doing today <coughs> excuse me if my voice is a bit husky I have a, a little bit of a cough um, so I'm hoping it's not going to cause me too many issues um, but yeah I'll quickly show you it because as I say, I have done a proper unboxing before, um, but it's only small, so it's easy enough to show you. But yeah, here it is. Oops. <laughs> Too many things in the way. There it is. It's very sweet. A very nice small painting, um, which, as I said in my last video, is, is kind of what I want to focus on for the next few months. Just to bring the volume of paintings in my stash down a little, you know, clear some off, get a few more finishes under my belt. So, I just love the colours of this one. Um, yeah, let me pop that away. And then I'm gonna crack straight on with kitting up because I don't have a super long time to do this. And I also don't know if my voice is gonna hold up okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be using this double layer storage container system because I have got 74 colours. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut these so that I've got the sticker separate. The picture separate, I mean. And then, oops, no, I normally do it this way. And then I'm going to quickly time lapse me putting the labels on the pots and then go grab some drills from the freezer where I put them just to be on the safe side because they didn't look too bad. Um, if you think I've gone mad, by the way, <laughs> the reason for putting drills in the in the freezer is to deal with static in the drills that makes it a bit of a pain to kit up. Um, and I often do that just as a kind of preventative measure, to be honest, rather than looking at them thinking they're okay and then finding that they're not when I get going I'll, I'll often just stick them in the freezer anyway and I thought there's so many small bags and I often find the small bags with not many drills in are the, the worst offenders for static so I'll, I'll just do that right I'm going to add all my stickers to the pots and then I will be back with some drills to kit up I've just labelled all these and then I've realised it probably would have made more sense to use my 240 bottle storage container where I could have had just one tray of 80 but oh well right I've got some cold drills and I'm going to get started I don't know if I will get through all of these in this session because I do have to pick my son up from school in a little bit but um but we'll see so We've had all of Christmas since I last filled you in on, on my life. So yeah, a few things to catch you up on today. So I think I last filmed on the day that my son was finishing school. Not last time I filmed. The last time I filmed a kind of chatty video. So he broke up for the holidays on the 20th of December. And today is his first day back in school. So it's, it's currently the 9th of January. So he was off for almost three weeks which we thought, 
sounded crazy because, you know, I never had that long off school for the Christmas holidays as far as I remember. But it's flown by as it so often does, you know. Every school holidays I think, oh my gosh, how am I going to fill the time? And then it just, it flies by. Oh, I'm glad I put them in the freezer because that's not without static still. Um, yeah. Shake, must remember to shake them around as well <laughs> to get the moisture of the freezer around all the drills. So we had a couple of days at home um, just to chill really and get ready to go away. Um, we saw some friends who we hadn't seen in a while. Um, so it's a friend from the um, antenatal group that I joined before I had my son and her daughter. And we used to see them all the time, you know, before the kids got busy with school and stuff. Um, we, we were just, we spent a lot of time together. The kids were best friends. They were going to get married, all of that. Um, and then life being what it is, we don't see them very often anymore, um, which is a shame. But, you know, things happen. And it's just, it's hard to find the time to, to catch up with people sometimes. So it was really lovely to catch up with them on that day. They came round to our house. They met Harry, who, who they hadn't actually met yet. Um, Harry the kitten, <laughs> if you're not familiar with Harry, if it's... Fame hasn't preceded him. <laughs> a few people have said recently that Harry is the highlight of my videos and I'm not quite sure whether to take offence at that. <laughs> but I suspect he would be the highlight of the videos for me too if I was watching because he is a bit of a cutie. <laughs> He's actually asleep on the cat tree next to me. Um, so he is around, but I, I'm not sure you're going to see him unless he decides to get up. He looks a bit passed out at the moment. <laughs> so we left to go to Cardiff, uh, where my family lives, and um, where we were spending Christmas on the 23rd of December. Actually a really smooth journey down there. We were braced for the roads to be rubbish with lots of people travelling, but I guess the way Christmas fell this year, it, it sort of spread out when people were travelling a bit. I'm going to wipe this tray down with some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A dryer sheet. Because um, I think there's just a little bit of static in the tray and it's connecting with the little bit of static still in the drills and just making them a bit less pleasant than I would like. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, where was I? So yeah, we travelled to Cardiff and... One of my nephews came over for the day and the night. Uh, we were staying with my parents um, and obviously he lives in Cardiff too. So he came over so that my son and him could hang out together. They were a little bit fractious this time. They're, they're normally the best of friends, but they were getting a little bit scrappy and disagreeing with each other a tiny bit. I think teenage hormones are starting to arrive, at least with my nephew, um, not that it was by any stretch of the imagination all he's doing, um, because yeah, my, my son was being a bit of a strop back too, you know, the excitement of Christmas and everything, but anyway, we had a nice time, we had a takeaway that evening with my parents, um, which I suggested just to avoid my mum feeling like she had to cook for us all when we got there. Um, so that was really nice. We had Chinese. It was yummy, actually. Really, really nice. I love a Chinese takeaway. Um, oh, it's already started. Where's that one come from? Is it there? Yeah. It's not so hard one. I've not done many yet. <laughs> and then the next day was Christmas Eve. And I had a quiet day because um, my, my son and husband went out. I think they went, did they go to play some football and then they went to play snooker? Well, pool. But I was starting to not feel too great. I've had some stomach issues in the past year or so. Just like every so often it will flare up. Um, and it, it felt like the start of that. It was, it's hard to describe because it's like nothing very specific was wrong. Um, like occasional flashes of nausea and 
feeling a bit bloated and struggling with food, like struggling to work out if I was hungry or just uncomfortable. And then, you know, if I got it wrong, that can make things worse. I, just like a general sense of discomfort, really. So that started Christmas Eve. And the problem then was that I did not sleep that night. In fact, I didn't sleep the night before very well either. So maybe it was starting then and I, I've misremembered. But like Christmas Eve, I could not sleep for hours. It's a bit ironic, isn't it, as an adult? <laughs> it wasn't excitement. It was, it was not feeling right. I was lying there and like I kept getting these weird like swooping sensations in my stomach. And, you know, do I feel sick? No. Do I feel... It was, it was horrible. I wasn't very happy. So Christmas Day came around and I was I was just basically in trying to get through it mode because whilst nothing was like terribly wrong or terribly uncomfortable, it was still quite kind of all consuming. So yeah, we got up, we did, um, we opened some presents. My son has a, uh, well, a Santa bag in um, in our room. So he has a few presents to open up first thing. And then we did the rest of his presents downstairs under the tree when some more people came around. I've got a few bags here that are going to be too big to fit, aren't they? I think I need some... So those two can just go elsewhere because they're going to be too full. And I'll get some bags to put the rest in. Right, 3024. Um, yeah, it just wasn't the best timing really because I just felt a little bit out of it between being tired and not being very comfortable and Christmas Day is, is it's full on isn't it and you want to be at your best and joining in with everyone. Ooh, it actually went, all of it went in, that's nice. Um, and there's like rich food to deal with which you don't really feel like if you're not feeling great. So yeah, it was a bit of a blur. I wouldn't say I had a great Christmas day. I was trying to be present for my son and just enjoy things with him. But honestly, I don't feel like I really did. <laughs> um, I got some lovely presents. Let me show you, in fact, what my husband got me. This is my main present for my husband and we haven't put it up yet. And there's a little mark where it was on the table and a, a cat walked on it with a muddy paw, but <laughs> isn't it lovely? He had it done on, um, he found someone on a website called Not On The High Street and I had that made. So yeah, I really loved that. Um, and I got him some puzzles and that kind of thing that he kind of wanted, he'd said, um, that he just wanted lots of like mind puzzle type things. <sighs> right, put these few spare ones in there. Um, and then my son, what did my son have for Christmas? He had all sorts of things really. There wasn't like a main present. Um, and he doesn't tend to ask for that much. So it's always like a guessing game really as to what to get him. He had a lava lamp, he had some clothes, he had some books, <coughs> he had some games, he had, yeah, just like all the usual suspects really. He was really happy and he was very spoilt by us and family. And then we were going to my sister's for Christmas Day, so my, my parents who we were staying with um, they always used to host us for Christmas Day, but it, it's just it's a little much for them now as they're getting older. So my two sisters who live in Cardiff are sort of taking it in turns to host. And this year was the year of my oldest sister. Um, so we went to her house with her family. So that's her three sons and her husband and her. And then there was my mum, my dad and me and my husband and son. So we were a nice little group for the day. Um, but yeah, I was obviously struggling a little bit. I, um, I was doing okay and then had Christmas dinner and then, I, I mean, I couldn't eat that much of it and then it made me feel like really, really weird. 
I had like I proper just felt woozy and sick and hot and cold and just like really overwhelmed so I had to go have a lie down had a little sleep and again it's like the cliche because like lots of people have a a little lie down after their Christmas day dinner but um yeah mine wasn't because of overindulgence <laughs> not this year at least but you know it was lovely um I don't know about you, wherever you are in, in the world, but um, here Christmas Day dinner is traditionally a turkey and that's what we had. And then a kind of roast dinner. So us Brits are famed for our roast dinners, aren't we? With all the, the roasted vegetables and that kind of thing. Um, but there's a few extras that you tend to do for um, Christmas dinner that you don't necessarily do all year round. So things like pigs in blankets, which are little sausages wrapped in bacon. There's like red cabbage. Um, a couple of different kinds of stuffing just like all the good things but yeah unfortunately I wasn't in the best place to enjoy it so yeah I, I went and had a lie down um, in the evening after that I felt a little better uh, we played a few games I wasn't really in the mood for games um, yeah I, I, I joined in a couple and I just sort of watched a couple um, but yeah it was fine and then oh I'm out of drills I need to go get some more drills already okay back in a sec here we are some smaller bags of drills to get through um so we went home and then we had a nice couple of quiet days which which did really help um, so in the UK, Boxing Day is the 26th of December and that is also a public holiday. You know, not many people are at work unless you're unlucky enough to work in like retail or leisure or places like that that are open. But most people are at home um, and often people will have another kind of party that day. Uh, we in my family like to delay our second party so that everyone has a bit of a rest and this year we weren't doing the second party until the 28th so that my brother could join in because he couldn't come any earlier. Um, so Boxing Day and the 27th were just nice quiet days really. Um, Boxing Day I did feel well enough after resting up loads to meet up with a friend who is a diamond painting friend, someone I met through diamond painting, um, who's become a very dear friend and I, I chat to a lot. And she lives fairly near to Cardiff, so it was doable to meet up. So she came back from her family Christmas and then she came and picked me up and we went to, well, we were, actually went, because we sort of didn't know where to go because, you know, a lot of places are going to be closed on a day like that. And if they're not closed, they're probably going to be rammed. <laughs> So we actually ended up going to a cinema complex that had a Costa Coffee in it that was open and just went and sat there for, gosh, at least a couple of hours um, and just had a really good chat. It was lovely, you know, just so nice to finally meet after many, many months of chatting and getting to know each other. So that was lovely. Oh, let me show you what she got me for Christmas. I, I sent her a Christmas present before Christmas, uh, which, to be honest, was nowhere near as nice as what she got me, so I feel kind of bad. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> she got me a pen from North Alchemist. One of my favourite pen turners. In fact, she's the one who got me into them. So, yeah, how beautiful is that? Really, really lovely. very generous she shouldn't have <laughs> but yeah it was lovely to catch up and then yeah the 27th we just we carried on just like resting up um spent time with my parents I cooked that evening um took my mum break oh we played old hell we we played old hell a couple of times when we were back it's um I'm not a big game player, like I don't really enjoy many board games and things, like sometimes one will come along that I really like, but most of the time it's not really my preferred activity. But I do like card games, and in particular I like this one card game that we play with my parents, um, and there's not many opportunities to play it because it, it's a four player game, 
you can sort of flex it to play with five but you know it, it you can't play it just the two of us at home for instance <coughs> And I've never come across anyone outside of my family who knows it. And not even all my family knows it. But we play it with my parents. They sometimes play it with one of my sisters and her husband. Um, and we've played it with that sister and, and husband. But I don't know if anyone else even plays. Anyway, it's very good. It's apparently similar to the game Hearts, which I've never played. But yeah, broadly speaking. So it's, it's a Trumps-based game. Um... You play four rounds and the trumps go in order, um, but your aim is to not win hands or rather not win points because certain cards count against you as points. And it can be really, really brutal because you do things like at the start of every round, you pass someone two cards that you want to get rid of. You can't pass just any of them, but you pass them two cards. And so that can really stuff someone up. And we do a lot of sort of... Um, good-natured teasing of each other while we play, shall we say. My son came along and wanted to play and we're like, like honestly, it's, it's, you're probably not quite there yet because it's quite complicated, but also it's a bit brutal. I don't think you'd enjoy it. <laughs> my, um, my husband has been playing it now for 20 years um, and still tends to often come last. <laughs> It's, yeah, the tactics take a while to refine, I would say. Anyway, so that was fun. We played that on the 27th and, and also on the 23rd when we first got there. So I'm really glad we got to do that because, you know, don't often have a chance given that I don't see my parents that often. And then on the 28th, we had that other family party, so we went to the other sister's house that didn't host on Christmas Day um, with all her family and then basically all of us. So it was, well, I'm one of four, so it was my parents, the four of us, our four partners and most of the kids, not everyone. Um, some couldn't make it or, or were elsewhere with other family. But yeah, there were a lot of us. <laughs> So that was, that was a good day. I wasn't feeling amazing, but I was doing a lot better than I was on Christmas Day. So I was able to enjoy that day more. We played a few games. We had a buffet. We did some quizzes. Just, you know, all the fun things and just hanging out together. Just what you want from Christmas, really. So that was good. And it was a highlight for my son because um, it was the day he was going to spend again with his younger cousins who were well, not not younger than him, but younger than some of his other cousins. He's the youngest, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was great. And then the 29th, we were coming back home, which I was quite ready to come home by that point because I did feel quite nervous leaving the cats alone well not alone obviously not alone for six nights they were actually really well looked after they have a cat sitter who adores them who stays over a lot of the nights um she didn't stay all through christmas obviously but she stayed about half the nights we were away i think so they have that company and then if she's not staying she's still spending loads of time with them so they get far more quality time with her than they would um you know, in, in most other ways that I could possibly have them cared for. And they don't have the trauma of leaving their home because, yeah, I, I think for, for my cats, a cattery um, would not be the best choice because, yeah, they like being at home. Anyway, I was champing at the bit to see them by the 29th. So it was, it was really nice to get home, I have to say. <laughs> Six days felt like a long time to be away. From Harry in particular, because he's, you know, younger. Like, I, I, I've i never liked leaving Xander either. I always find it a struggle, but I am at least used to sometimes leaving him for longer. Yeah. So I still wasn't feeling right. I was just kind of resting up. And in fact, I think I, at this point, I actually went a little downhill again. Which isn't ideal. Because, <laughs> like... New Year's Eve, I know I wasn't feeling great. And I was planning to get in touch with the doctors in the new, in the new year. But of course, like nothing's really open 
at Christmas and, you know, New Year's Eve when I was thinking this was a Sunday anyway. So then I thought, like, there must be something I could do. What could I try? What haven't I tried already? I'd been taking, like, my parents a Omeprazole through Christmas. Um, so I was already doing the sort of gastro resistant stuff and it, it seemed to be helping a little bit, but it definitely wasn't dealing with all of it. So I thought maybe a probiotic because I drink like a probiotic yogurt drink in the mornings. And that had helped me when I initially had these stomach issues earlier last year, um, but like didn't seem to be doing the trick anymore. So I went over to a supermarket to just see what there was. And I came away with a couple of things. Um, one was like a sort of IBS type treatment for bloating and, and all those kind of fun things. <laughs> And the other was like this superpower probiotic. It was like labeled as a boost one that had like four times the strength of, of other probiotics. So I started taking those and I'm not even kidding, within a few hours, I was feeling quite a lot better. I think I was feeling kind of weird late afternoon because I hadn't managed to eat much. And then I felt hungry and I ate and, and that had been a problem as I said all through Christmas that like, I couldn't really tell if I was hungry or just having stomach issues. But on this occasion I ate, it settled in my stomach without making me feel weird. And then I felt really okay after that. So it's like, finally I got to actually probably enjoy part of Christmas. So we went to see um, some friends, it's sort of late afternoon for a couple of hours. Um, so the friend that I, I saw just before Christmas actually, um, and she'd invited us, um, to spend the evening with them for New Year's Eve and, and she was having a few other people over. But we didn't want to have to get a taxi back late. Um, we weren't going to be, you know, we were going to have a few drinks so we didn't want to drive. And also we had nice plans at home so we, we ended up going over there for a few hours and then coming back home and having the evening, the three of us. And doing a repeat of last year which is where basically we just made a party of it at home, the three of us with having a really nice meal and then playing some games and listening to music. We did cocktails and mocktails and just had a really fun time. I stayed up very late because that's part of the deal as well for my son who gets very into New Year's Eve but really likes staying up late. And it's, it's kind of the one night of the year that he gets to kind of decide how late he wants to stay up. Right, I need more drills again. I will be back soon. I thought I'd done more of this than I actually had. <laughs> so I've got a bit further to go than I realised. 74 colours is a lot. I'm doing okay for time, but I do wonder if my camera battery will last the whole time I need. So we shall see. But yeah, we were, um, we were up till... <laughs> Please don't judge me. Like I say, my son is a night owl and it's a big treat for him on New Year's Eve that he just gets to stay up. So we were up till half two in the morning because that is when he finally, finally admitted that he was tired. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he did not even seem tired until maybe two o'clock. <laughs> and then there was half an hour of just watching him kind of droop slowly. <laughs> Before he said, yeah, I want to go to bed now. <laughs> Woohoo, victorious. <laughs> but, you know, it, it really is a, an important part of the fun of the evening for him. So whatever. It's one night a year, right? Yeah. New Year's Day was another sort of taking it fairly easy one. My husband cooked us a nice roast, which was nice. He was helping me out a lot with the cooking once we got home from Christmas because I was just struggling so much with food. Um, but yeah. And then it was January. Ugh. It feels like not that long ago. I can't believe it's the 9th already because I don't really know what we've done with the intervening days. <laughs> I sort of started back to work. Um, I mean, I never closed the shop over Christmas. It was open just with longer processing times, but I wasn't making putty and, and trying to keep on top of that kind of thing. And then I, I did, I think, well, 
I think I only did it like once that first week in January for my new release um, and just you know did some organizational things but I wasn't feeling it yet with hubby and son both off work and school still <laughs> my husband works in a university so whilst he never really is properly off because he's always got things he, he needs to do um he tends to like just totally stop around Christmas for a little while and that is what he had done so you know we were able to spend some family time and just you know hang out flew by though I really really did um I did a fair bit of dime painting so I finished um I choose you from diamond art studio I actually finished it last night so I will put up a post review soon because I've got a couple of post reviews to do um I have done a couple of sneak peeks which you'll have seen I've done a couple of other videos um I unboxed my mystery box I don't know why I'm telling you this as though you don't know <laughs> Unless this is the first video of mine you've seen, it's rather pointless, isn't it? Me listing <laughs> videos that I've made. I'm just thinking about things I've done, really. I think my brain's a bit scattered because I didn't sleep well last night. Which seems to be the case every time I film a video, I'm saying I'm really tired. My brain's scrambled, but yeah, that is me. I'm usually tired, to be honest. <laughs> We've all been a little under the weather the past few days, which isn't helping. I've obviously got a bit of a cough and just had a slight tight chest. Nothing more than that, really. Um, my son's got quite a nasty cough. Um, and it kind of, it can be bad at times when it's aggravated. Like he went to football training last night and after running around in the cold, he came back absolutely coughing up a lung. But then once it settles, it's not too bad. So again, he's not like properly ill, ill. Um, my husband actually spent the weekend not feeling right and he's like he has the opposite of man flu like he, it's hard to get him to admit when he doesn't feel right <laughs> so when he says I don't feel right I'm like oh no what's happening <laughs> so yeah he spent the weekend again with a cough and just like a bit of kind of achiness very tired not his usual appetite like nothing major but not not stuff that's common for him we've all been testing and as far as i can tell it's it's not the spicy cough <laughs> as a friend of mine calls it just some generic virus but it's been stressing me out a little bit because it's my birthday in two days and then we have a party this weekend so yeah fingers crossed in my next chatty video i'm telling you that that all went swimmingly and everyone was well <laughs> and not that you know it all got cancelled at the last minute because i'm a bit of a catastrophizer and i do worry there's already a few people who can't come my sister's really ill at the moment so she's hoping that she's going to feel better by the weekend it is what it is it's january <laughs> everyone's in a state of collapse one way or the other Oh, that one's rubbish. Let's put some dry sheet in there. But yeah, as I've spoken about, I think in previous videos, I already don't feel amazing about turning 40 um, without everything going wrong that we planned. That would just be the, the icing on the cake, the cake that there would not be. Actually, I hadn't even thought about a cake. And then my mum messaged me earlier saying, do you want me to bring a cake? I was like, oh, yes, please. <laughs> We've got caterers for the party, but I hadn't thought about a birthday cake. And it's not just my party anyway. It's for my husband as well, because he's 40, 11 days after me. But yeah, fingers crossed. Please keep your fingers crossed for me. Uh, what else have we done? We finally booked the holiday that we're going to have with my parents this year. So we talked about it for a long time because my parents have taken all of their grandkids on a special holiday. Um, which is something that my dad's parents actually did for all of us. 
But much like what happened with me, which is that by the time I was kind of old enough to go, they were feeling a bit too... just a bit older and frailer and didn't really feel able to keep me entertained for a week by myself. So they, my parents came along as well. Oops! And that's not even the one I was looking for, is it? Um, uh, the same things happened. So my parents wanted to take my son and his cousin, the one I've mentioned before that he gets on generally very well with, away. But they wanted to do something that suits them. So they were thinking something like a centre parks holiday because they both love that. But they are not in... Uh, they're not physically well enough to do that and join in with things so they needed me and my husband to go which was fine um and we agreed you know we will contribute to the cost because this is a treat from them except we're going to so that increases costs anyway so we had this plan that we would go to centre parks in holland because my mum really fancied that and we'd heard it was a lot cheaper um and she thought we could go into amsterdam for the day and that was the plan, but we hadn't got round to doing anything. And when I looked a few days ago, <coughs> excuse me, um, there wasn't really anything. Like, I don't know if we just missed the good lodges and the good sites, um, but there wasn't really anything that suited our needs. And more to the point, it wasn't much cheaper than the UK parks. And that was part of the reason for going there, is you always hear, like, the UK parks charge a lot in school holidays and on the continent they don't as much but it, it really wasn't that cheap so then I looked at parks in the UK and said like if it's not much price difference should we just do that because it's a lot easier we don't have all the added expense of getting to Holland and maybe do that whole thing another time um so I had a look and found things that would work at the Sherwood Forest Centre Parks near Nottingham, but there were only a handful left because it was for May, May half term, so like it's school holidays, like it gets booked up. So I said to my dad, you know, there's only about six lodges left of the kind we want in the kind of location we want. And we we're talking about it and he was saying, yeah, no, I'm really coming around to this idea. I think I think that would be good. You know, check that, um, you know, my nephew's happy with that. Check everyone's happy with it. Let's get it sorted today kind of thing. And I was checking with my sister, which took a few hours because she was working. <laughs> and then I checked back on the website and suddenly there was only one lodge left of the kind we wanted in the kind of location we wanted. <laughs> But a major panic, tried to call my dad, who wasn't available because he was visiting a friend, called my mum, and she said, just book it, book it. So I did. <laughs> and luckily everyone was happy that I did. But uh, yeah, so that was a bit stressful, unexpectedly. I mean, first world problems, right? The stress of booking a holiday, but uh, it was something that the boys had been really looking forward to, and we'd been thinking we might not be able to manage to do it, so just didn't want to miss the opportunity having found a way that we could make it work for us all so yes that is what we are doing in may half term we're only going for four nights because i mean you can stay for a week at center parks in the uk but i think that would be a bit much for us all because we'll probably be quite full on while we're there and obviously that would then push the costs up again but you know arrive lunchtime-ish on the Monday, leave whatever time we want on the Friday and all the time in between will be packed with activities. So I think we'll be done. <laughs> we will be done by the Friday. And then we're also talking about plans for a couple of other trips we want to do. So my proposed present for my husband for his birthday is to take him to the Lake District for a weekend, probably just the two of us, um, because he loves wild water swimming and he's been making noises for a while about going up there to swim in some of the lakes. So that's what we're hopefully going to do if we can find somewhere. And then we also wanted to get away just the two of us for our, our, our joint birthdays. And again, that's probably going to be a weekend thing. Um, and yeah, 
not sure where really. I think we probably fancy going into Northern Europe somewhere. Possibly Belgium because that's that's a favourite of ours, going places like Ghent. Um, possibly a city in Northern France. You know, we, we won't try and go too far because if we're going for a weekend, we don't want to spend it all travelling. But that would be really, really nice. So that's hopefully something we can do later this year as well. So gradually getting organised. <laughs> we caught up with our neighbours this weekend, just gone as well. Uh, there's a, a couple who live two doors down from us, well, with their young daughter now as well, who moved in about 2014. We, we moved here the year before and... Um, Andy, the guy, is one of those really lovely, friendly people that, like, when they move into a new place, knocks on doors and says hello to all the neighbours, which we are far too socially awkward for. <laughs> um, but we're not too socially awkward to, um, to, to like that when someone does it to us. So, yeah, we've, um, we've got to know them and, and they've been good friends over the years. So every now and again, we just have an evening together. When my son was younger and they didn't have their daughter yet, they'd always come to us. Now we go to them because my son will happily stay up and enjoys having a later night out of it. And of course their daughter has to be there to go to bed. So yeah, went and had a good catch up. We were going to do a kind of murder mystery pack together. But then we were, we were chatting until it got quite late. And we thought, yeah, if it takes us a while to do, it's going to be a really late night. And we're all old fuddy-duddies. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, we left that for another time, but we're, we've penciled in a date to do that in a, in a couple of weeks. And I think that's all I can think of to report from the, um, the Christmas holidays, really. It's been good. It's been a little disappointing the times when I was not feeling well, but you, we've made the best of it and, you know, it could have been far worse. I'm just hoping that my son is okay when he comes out of school in a bit. His cough tends to be okay in the daytime, but um, yeah. He's got football training again tonight. I don't think he should go because he went to the other football training last night and, and it set off his cough so badly. It took ages to settle. I just think, well, it's this cold because it's very cold in the UK this week. Well, I say that. It... it, it it definitely could be colder, but it's it seems to have dropped quite suddenly. So yeah, it's it's that really icy air in your lungs, which isn't great if they're if you're already coughing. Almost there. <coughs> I'm looking forward to working on this one. I don't have, because I'm going to be doing smaller projects the next few weeks, I don't know if I'll always have kitting up videos because I won't necessarily have enough accompanying chat to make them worthwhile. But you should see a few more starts and finishes from me coming up if I stick to my plan. Mind you, that's a big if. <laughs> already bought one painting this year which was the fortune teller painting that came out with diamond art club this saturday just gone because i just yeah it's another one that's maybe not entirely my usual style but it sort of is in the sense that it's just got lots of gorgeous colors and little details and all those kinds of things so that's on its way to me probably arrive tomorrow i think so I'll have a unboxing of that up sometime soon. Gosh, I'm getting husky. I've only got a few left so I can make it, but <laughs> then I need a big drink of water. I'm not sure where my husband is actually. He said he'd be back from work by now. He went into the office this morning for the first time since, I guess, before Christmas. And he said he was coming back for a late lunch, 
which I mean it's going to be a very late lunch because it's currently 25 to 3. <laughs> Probably got caught up doing something. Either that or the whole thing was a cover and he's sorting things for my birthday. <laughs> I know what my, my present's going to be because um, we're going shopping for it together tomorrow. Um, and I will, I'm sure, show you in a future video. But um, he'll, he'll be wanting to pick up a card and that kind of thing. He's, he's, he's very good at birthdays and Christmases. <laughs> He always thinks up these lovely original ideas. You know, he's much better at it than me. So I feel very fortunate and very loved with the effort that he goes to. He'll also probably be trying to corral my son to do something because my son is not so into thinking about these things and needs a lot of encouragement, <laughs> which we try and do not because, you know, I want another present, but because I think it's an important life skill to value giving things and to learn the enjoyment of choosing someone something that you know will give them pleasure and then feeling happy when they open it and seeing that you did make them happy. Um, and I mean, he's all on board in, in theory, but he doesn't like to put much effort into actually trying to think of things. <laughs> I mean, he's only 10. Don't get me wrong. There's time, but we will continue to work on it with him. He actually got me for Christmas, with my husband's help, a scratch-off map of the world with the idea being that I can scratch off countries that I have had orders from for the shop, <laughs> which is really fun because I keep a, a little note of that just because it's exciting and, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a dork. So whenever someone orders from a brand new country, I'm like, there's another country, guess guess who guess where someone ordered from and they both guess and they're better at geography than me so it normally involves things like is it in asia and i'm like uh yes i think so <laughs> and other such embarrassing things but yeah <laughs> we get there in the end all right so foxy lady is all set and ready to go i'm going to oops just organize this case a little bit Ooh. just poking them out picking it up so I'll put those no actually I won't do that because what I will do <laughs> is I will have the tray sat next to me so that this is closest to me so that's then the majority of them and then I'll lift the top tray out and put it there so that I can reach those easily as well in fact I may rearrange these so they're on the front bits and then I will be able to reach everything these will go in the lid and we're all set perfect okay thank you for listening to me ramble on today um sorry about my husky voice but I hope that you've enjoyed hearing about my Christmas um, and I hope that you had a lovely Christmas and New Year whatever you were doing as well if you have enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like on it. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet and you've enjoyed what you've seen, please consider doing that too. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye. <laughs>